Okay, so what is the best approach and method to solve a math word problem like this? Well, of course, that's going to be the topic of this video. But uh, some of you might be, uh, say, well, the best method is any way I can get the right answer. And I would have to agree, as long as you can solve the problem, uh, truly that's what counts. But really, there's kind of some bigger picture topics here that I want to talk about. But before we even get into that, let me go ahead and read you the problem. It says the sum of two numbers is 188, and the difference of those numbers is 34. We're looking for the numbers. What are the numbers? So, uh, you know, I don't want to kind of give, me, uh, give you too many hints here because I want you to be creative and think about how you could solve this problem. So if you can figure this out, go ahead and put your answer into the comment section. I'm going to show you the right answer in just one second, and then I'm going to show you the best techniques and methods that you want to know in order to solve a problem like this. This is going to be really important stuff for those of you that want to learn mathematics and algebra. So I'll give you, you know, a little bit of a hint. I will be using algebra to solve this problem. But uh, before we get started, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John, and I have been teaching middle and high school math for decades. And it really is my true passion to try to make learning math as easy as possible. So if you need assistance in mathematics, check out my math help program at tcmathacademy.com. You can find a link to that in the description below. And if this video helps you out, don't forget to like and subscribe, as that definitely helps me out. Okay, so uh, feel free to use a calculator. Again, I don't want to give you too many clues. I guess I gave you a little bit of a clue. I said algebra, so if you're thinking, I have to use some algebra to solve this problem, well, likely that is the case. But let's go ahead and take a look at the answer. The answer is these two numbers is 77 or R, 77 and 111. Okay, so these are the two numbers in question. Now, if you uh, solve this in a different way, okay, and let me kind of go up here real quick. Uh, you said, well, I got two numbers, 188 and 34. I mean, how could you solve this uh, without using algebra? Well, you could just test a bunch of numbers. I got another number here. I'm going to add them up, subtract them, just kind of, you know, use trial and error uh, to figure out this, uh, you know, question, right, to solve the problem. You could, of course, you know, take that method, but that is kind of a guess and check method. What we want to do is use a more uh, more direct approach. And for those of you that used algebra, or even for those of you that solved this problem, we have to celebrate your success by giving you a nice little happy face and A plus a 100% and multiple stars so you can brag to your uh, friends and family that indeed you are a professional expert in solving. Now, this is what type of problem this is, and hopefully this is the technique you, technique you use. This is what we call a system word problem, a linear system word problem. So you can just tell your uh, friends, be like, you know, and your family, hey, I'm a, you know, an expert at solving a linear system word problems. They'd be like, wow, you're so smart. You really should be working at NASA. Uh, but anyways, with all jokes aside, let's go ahead and get into this because this is really important stuff, especially for those of you out there that are studying any sort of mathematics that involves algebra, okay? Algebra is our friend. It makes, uh, uh, you know, things or makes uh, problems like this very easy to solve. But let's go ahead and get into the problem here. So, uh, of course, we're dealing with a math word problem, and you should always use the rule of three. Okay, what's the rule of three? The rule of three when you're faced with any math word problem is to read the thing one, two, three times at a minimum. Okay, do not read the problem one time and then just kind of start doing stuff. You're going to not understand what you're looking for, okay? Very few people would, uh, you know, even those that could just read this problem once and start working would not, okay? You want to absorb the problem, think about it. So the first time, read the problem. Second time, start pulling some information in, some details. The third time, really understand what that question is. Of course, the question here is we are looking for uh, two mystery numbers, right? So these two numbers have um, these qualities in mind, right? That when we add them up, uh, um, the sum is 188, and when we subtract them, the difference is 34. So we're looking for these numbers. So how many things are we looking for, okay? How many unknown values are in this problem? So this is where algebra comes to the rescue, right? So we're thinking about this, well, okay, 
uh, there's the sum of two numbers. All right, I don't even know what one number is. I'm looking for two numbers. So uh, typically, okay, more often than not, when you're looking for two un or the number of unknown values that you're looking for in a math problem, okay, is the number of variables you're going to need. Okay, so instead of just using x, we're going to uh, need more than one variable. So we're probably going to need a variable like y. Okay, so the number of unknown values in a problem is an indication of how many variables you're going to uh, need in order to solve that problem. Okay, and this is going to get into some other topics here called um, well, the other kind of big picture topic that I want to talk about here uh, called systems. But we'll get to that in just one second. But anyways, this is the first thing that I want you to be thinking about when you're looking at a uh, math word problem, especially if you know that you're going to have to be using algebra. You're like, all right, how many unknown values? Oh, there's two. So I'm probably going to have to use two variables. All right. So with that in mind, okay, after you read this problem, what you want to do is try to model this situation. Okay. Now this is kind of difficult to model, uh, but you can kind of come up with any kind of, uh, you know, uh, way to represent what's going on here. Okay. But once we have some variables established, we're going to need to construct some equations to solve for those uh, variables, but I don't want to get too far ahead of myself. So let's go ahead and uh, think about this, right? So we're dealing with two numbers. Okay. That's what we're looking for. The sum of two numbers. And the question is, what are the numbers? So uh, what we want to do is kind of define, and this is the way you would want to do this, you know, again, a test homework and just getting kind of get in the habit of it, of uh, writing out mathematics is let's go ahead and define two numbers. And I'll say, I'm going to say let X equal the first number I'm looking for and let Y equal the second number. You could use different variables. A, B doesn't make a difference, but we're going to need two variables. We're looking for two unknown values. Okay, so that's kind of the big picture here. So how do I solve an algebra equation when I have two variables? Well, this is where it's going to um, kind of require uh, an understanding of this mathematical concept. This is very, very important, is that the number of variables you are looking to solve for, in this case, we're looking to solve for two x and y two variables that's the number of equations we're going to need okay so if i was just looking to solve for x i can construct one equation but because i'm looking to solve for x and y two variables i'm going to need two different equations okay to solve for those uh, two variables so this is a very important concept all right so the number of variables you have that's the number of equations you're going to need. And when you have more than one variable, okay, when you're dealing with what we call, uh, you know, a one, uh, uh, let me, I don't want to get too technical here, but let's say I was dealing with uh, the variable X, okay, now I'm dealing with X and Y. These are what we call linear to the, or to the power of one. When I'm just solving for one variable, that's what we call a linear equation. If I'm solving for two different um variables, okay, and I have two equations. Now this is called a system, uh, a linear system. Okay, now uh, some of you might be uh, kind of confused. I totally understand that, but if you are taking any sort of algebra, especially like first year algebra or beyond, uh, this is a huge topic. You have to understand systems. And if you feel like you're gonna need help with this, like systems, and I'm gonna show you this in here in a second, I'm going to leave links to my algebra course. You might want to check out my algebra one or algebra two courses. Uh, you'll find the links to those in the description. Also, I have a ton of additional videos on systems, but uh, let's go ahead and continue on here. So again, we um, are looking for two different numbers. We're going to represent those with two variables. So we're going to need two equations. Now we have to build those equations. But before we do that, I need you to build me uh, a uh, solution to increase my subscribers, right? I'm just kind of have to be, you know, uh, pretty creative with my little impromptu rem uh, remarks. But listen, by you subscribing to my channel, it really does help my channel grow. It helps my classroom grow, and I'm trying to reach as many people as possible to help them learn math in a non-textbook kind of way. So thank you so much by uh, doing that. And also, if you are going to subscribe, make sure to hit that notification button so you can get my latest videos. I'm pretty much posting daily. Okay, so let's go ahead and get back into this problem here. So here it is. 
So it just says a review, right? So the sum of two numbers, we're looking for two numbers. What are these numbers? So we're like, oh, we're looking for two unknown values. So we're going to need two variables. We uh, stated that X is going to be one number and Y is going to be the other number. Okay. So at that point, we're like, all right, I have two variables, right? So we talked about that, two variables. So that means I'm going to need two equations. I'm going to need two equations. So uh, the information in this problem, you can build one equation, but that's not enough to solve for two variables. You're going to need two uh, equations. So let's go ahead and get into how we can build that. So let's start pulling the information from the problem to build these equations. So the first should be pretty easy, right? The sum of these two numbers is 188. In other words, if we add these two numbers up, we get 188. So x plus y, here's that first number, here's our second number. x plus y is 188. This is the sum, all right? Pretty straightforward stuff here. And uh, the difference of these two numbers is 34. So we just subtract these two. So x minus y is 34. This is the difference. Okay, so as I indicated, uh, you're going to need two equations. And, uh, you know, when you're given a word problem like this in some sort of math class or, you know, test exam, these problems are intended to have all the enough information for you to solve. Okay. So in other words, you're like, oh, there's not enough information. Well, 99% of the time, uh, there will be enough information. Rarely, but can happen uh, where uh, some of the problems that you're given, there, there's not enough information. So if it's like a multiple choice, uh, you know, question like A, B, C, D, uh, sometimes the answer D is like not enough information. That's that's a pretty rare occurrence. It can happen, but typically when you have a problem, you're going to have enough information to solve that problem. Okay, so we needed two variables. We're looking for two unknowns, and we need to build two equations. And here are our two equations. Now what we're dealing with here is called a linear system, okay? A linear system, a big, huge topic in algebra. So now the objective here is to solve this system. Now, if you couldn't figure out how we developed the system, no big deal, but you should be able to uh, solve this, okay? If you have some basic algebra skills, and if you don't, no problem, I wanna show you how to solve it right now. Okay, so there is, this is a big topic, okay, to solve linear systems. Uh, so here is our system. There are different techniques we can use. Okay, I'm going to be very, very brief here because this is a big topic. If you need help with systems, okay, again, just go to uh, check out those uh, suggestions that I gave you. But here, uh, we could use something called the substitution method. Okay, we could also use something called the elimination or uh, linear combination method. Uh, there's other methods. You can use the graphing method. And as you uh, continue to study algebra, there's other advanced techniques like uh, uh, you, we can use matrices, for example, to solve a system of equations. But uh, the deal is you need to be good at all these techniques, primarily the substitution and a linear combination methods. Okay, you really have to do a ton of problems uh, and just look to see what the best opportunities are. Now, again, if you're lost about this, well, this is just something that you need to learn. But let's go ahead and take a look at the best way to solve this system, the easiest way to solve this system. Matter of fact, here's some of the work, but let me just tell you right here, the objective, okay, when you're solving any a linear system is to get rid of one variable, to create one equation with one variable. Here I have an equation right here. It has two variables, X and Y. Here I have another equation with two variables. How can I write one equation with just one variable? That's always the objective when you're solving a system. So the easiest way to do this is to think, all right, I, I need to eliminate one of these variables, X or Y. The best way in this particular problem is to use the elimination or linear combination method. Okay, And what that means is that, uh, actually, let me go back up here one more time, is that in systems, okay, you can combine, you can add down these equations to form new equivalent equations in the system, okay? Uh, so again, you know, this is a big, big topic, but hopefully uh, those of you out, you know, that, excuse me, those of you um, out there that have studied algebra are understanding what I'm doing here. Okay, so we're going to eliminate the Y variable by just simply adding down, 
Okay, we're going to form a new equation. It's kind of like making a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. We're allowed to do this with systems. We could take this equation, add it to this equation, and come up with a new equation. And this equation uh, can be used to solve our system. Okay, so when I take this x, I add it to this x, I get 2x. y minus y is 0. We eliminate the y var uh, variable. That's what we want, you know, we want to do. We want to get rid of one of the variables and create one equation with one variable. Okay, so here the y's go away, and then here I got 188 plus 34, which of course is 22. So now we're like, oh, awesome. I got one equation with one variable. So let's go ahead and solve for x. Okay, so to solve for x, all I got to do is divide both sides of the equation by 2. And so 222 divided by 2 is 111. So x is equal to 111. This is one of our numbers. Okay, so how do we get the other number? Well, this is super easy. So we just go back to the original system, and we can use either one of these equations right here, right? Now that we know that x is 111, I can either plug in 111 in this equation right here, or this equation right here to solve for y. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and pick the first equation. Again, you could use the other equation. So x plus y is equal to 188, right? So the sum of those two numbers is 188. We know that one of those numbers is 111. So 111 plus y is 188. So all we need to do is solve for y by subtracting 111 from both sides of the equation. And we get y is equal to 77. Okay, now if you are not you know, familiar with systems, okay, uh, you know, or in algebra, you know, like maybe you haven't taken enough algebra or maybe you're like in pre-algebra, basic algebra, you know, you could very well be like, all right, I, I didn't like this problem, Mr. YouTube math man. You know, I got smoke coming out of my ears. This is too much. Well, it's only too much because, you know, you haven't kind of learned this topic. Okay. You, you have to get instruction. You got to build up. It's like climbing stairs. All right. It's like, okay, we're, what we're doing here is a system word problem, a system a, a two variable to be specific, a two variable system, uh, two variable linear system word problem. <laughs> okay, there's a lot of ways you can describe things in algebra, but to get to this level, okay, you got to first know what is a system, what are the different techniques um, uh, to solve a system. You know, what's a substitution method, what's a linear combination method. Practice these methods really, really good, and then apply all these uh, skills to solving. Uh, system word problems, okay? So anytime you feel frustrated in math, all you have to do is just figure out, okay, what level am I at? And just start building yourself up, okay? There are no uh, shortcuts. That's how you get, uh, that's how you'll um, stay frustrated in math if you are, you know, having a tough time is by trying to take shortcuts. I really don't like when I see things out there uh, that say, hey, look, uh, you know, learn high school math in three days or get, you know, you know, learn algebra in, you know, two hours. You know, you know, those are like quick tutorials. You might learn something about the topic. You're never going to master the topic. OK, so in other words, yeah, you might learn basic skills to solve basic level problems, but you're never going to be a certified professional. OK, and that's what you want to be, especially if you are a serious math student. Okay, so with all that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.